Hey guys, it's the editors of Premier Guitar coming at you from Carver Vintage in Nashville to give you our NAM Day 2 recap, our editor's picks, if you will. Um, I'm Sean Hammond, editorial director. This is Jason Shadrick, associate editor, and senior editor Ted Drozdowski. Um, we didn't talk about who was going to go first. Who wants to go first? Do you want to go, Ted? Um, sure. I wasn't here yesterday, yeah. so let yeah. me go first yes. today. That's great. Uh, well, it's kind of the... This is maybe an editor's pick, but I'm just going to say one thing. Like, I decided today that I would just go not be me. So to not be me, How that meant, that? well, I went and played a bunch of Jacksons and Steinbergers. Or rather, oh, Kramers. Wish, I'm sorry, Kramers and Steinbergers. I wish I had a shot of that. And I'm like, this is because that's not my normal, you know, milieu. Floyd. But there were so many Kramers and Steinbergers around. It's like, I've got to go try those. And I have to admit, I had a blast. Mm -hmm. That was you know? one of my uh, <laughs> picks yesterday that. because my second guitar was a Stage Master Custom. I remember that. So. And man, those felt so good, you know? And uh, I can't believe you just said that. I that, mean, not that they're not good, but just no, knowing. It felt, your style. It felt great, is, you know? And I just cranked up the gain and I was like pretending that I could actually shred. <laughs> I had a great time. Yeah, you're going to have to get another shot of you with your flying V, <laughs> all your vintage guitars, and then a Kramer. And then a Kramer, right, right. So then I went and tried the Lizzie Hale. Uh, <laughs> The Explorer. The Explorer, I was there as well. Because I thought, well, if I'm in this mode, I'm going to yeah. keep it up. Why stop? And it was really fun. I'm, I'm kind of excited that uh, Gibson actually seems committed to making cool guitars again. And, and you know, getting those two neglected brands back into the market. Yeah. They had Kramer and Steinberger for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Haven't really done anything with it. So it's nice. So that's one of your, that's your first pick? Just I, yeah, that you know, let's just say that. A, yeah, let's okay. just say that's a pick. We'll make it okay. a conceptual pick. <laughs> Jason, you want to go? Yeah. So today I did uh, a video, <clears throat> one of the last ones I did, on this company called Grez Guitars, G-R-E-Z. And they had this model called the Fulsum, which is kind of a single cut, as you can see, because the Matt here will excellently edit in the photo here. But it's kind of like a single cut, but uh, a little bit wider, lower bout than a, a typical Telly or T-style. When I look at that, I see an old uh, Bigsby. Really, I see. I feel like the oh, lines like the on Bigsby. there are yeah, like tall, yeah, Bigsby, exactly. early guitars. Or like a TK Smith style mm -hmm. body, yeah. Which, go back to Bigsby, right? Right. <clears throat> so, uh, RJ Ronquillo uh, did the demo today. He did a great job. He did a couple demos for us today. And uh, it was a pretty hip uh, guitar. It came in uh, three days. There's a bark in your yeah, pocket. I didn't want to know. It, I'm, a, I'm a professional. <laughs> uh, it comes in three kind of different variations. The, the pickups and the woods are the same, but what changes is uh, the one you're seeing the picture of has Mastery Bridge and a Bigsby. Then there's one that has like a, a traditional T style with grass saddles uh, bridge. And then the third one just has a mastery with no big speed. Um, Lawler Firebird pickup in the neck and a Lindy Fralin overwound pickup in, in the bridge. And it was, it was a pretty good screamer. Honduran mahogany neck, basewood body. Um, they go between 2480 and 2780. Uh, depending on which of the three hardware configurations uh, you go, but I was I was pretty impressed. We've we've done videos and reviewed some of their stuff before, but this one was was it looked pretty hip, looked very hip, and it and it sounded really good. And RJ made a point to play our old. I don't know if you guys ever get this. The, the demo guy will get clever and play our old theme song. Or like an eight year old. The riff you know? we using like and eight we had years. two guys, so RJ and Sean Tubbs, back to back, nice. unbeknownst to each other, both nice. played that. So. That was my first pick, was the Grez Guitars Fulsome. Nice. Well, yesterday we talked, you talked about some Fender stuff, but then yes. <laughs> you did the Fender video, so I didn't actually get over there, but I was checking my emails this morning, and they like surprised everyone with a Squire unveiling that uh, I was pretty excited about. Mm -hmm. And after I posted it on socials, people were pretty excited. I figured they would be. So there are three new Starcasters from Squire. Uh, there's a classic vibe one that pretty much looks like the classic player one that they had before. I think that they, I did ask them and they said they kind of, it's not the exact same specs as that, but it looks the same. Um, and that's $399, so great deal. Um, and the wide range humbuckers, they're not like the, what is it, the, uh, the rubberized magnets in the original wide range. They're not like faithful to that spec, but they are that size now. Um, and then there's uh, a contemporary one 
that has no F holes and it's still like chambered and it has their new um, active pickups. I forget what they call them. And let's see. And then there's an Affinity one that's two ninety nine, and it still has the F holes. It has just regular humbuckers and only two knobs, volume and tone. And they all look and mm -hmm. felt really good. And they come in a few different colors. So I was stoked about that. I'm, I'm always, I'm a fan of uh, affordable guitars that you can just you know tweak if you want with new pickups or whatever, and they still feel great, but they sound mm -hmm. even better. Um, yeah, I was stoked about that. I love old StarCast. That's one of my favorite offset body shapes somehow. Yeah, I played one of those as well. And uh, one thing that I thought was interesting is that uh, the neck on the one that I put seemed really good for small hands in particular. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're if you're sort of getting into guitar and just biting into it, it might just hit you at the right age. Or if you're a smaller person, it just seems like it might be a really good guitar too, at least in the campfire chord zone. You know? Yeah. So yeah, um, you got another one? Yeah, I got another one. Um, Electro Harmonics debuted a, well, they actually debuted a product from the 70s oh. <laughs> in a new iteration. It's called the Dirt Road Special, and it's an amp that they used to make. It's very cool. It's a little box, just a little bigger than the size of the 1x12 inside of it. And the 1x12 is actually based on an old proprietary speaker they made as well. Hmm. They tried a couple of early 70s amps that they had, and this particular speaker seemed to be the one that served best. But the idea is, you know, yeah, checks they make pedals why not make a pedal platform yeah. so it's all solid state it's super clean you know it's very reverb. light how many watts? Uh, <laughs> reverb oh yes 20 watts and reverb they basically have built the top of the line hollow thin pedal into it so it's got plate it's got spring it's got uh what else is that thing it's got hall uh -huh. it doesn't have flurb which they had in the original hall of fame i, I actually really love flurb because that's like david gilmore to box to me right you know but it's got four different reverbs based on the uh same you know transistor as they so have it's not like a a reissue of the original one. It's like bringing it back, but adding some. Yeah, stuff it's sort of like a reissue nice. plus. Mostly a name. It's a yeah, and it goes for uh, three ninety five. Is a uh, oh, screen wow. on it. He says yeah. one by twelve. Uh, it's a one by twelve, and it's twenty watts. Ah, oh, okay. And it's a really good, basic, clean, straight up uh, amp. Nice. Cool. We're, I think we're doing the video for that tomorrow. Cool. Nice. What you got, Jason? Me. Uh, the next one I have uh, uh, Rev. Let me get the picture here so I know what I'm talking about. Rev, went to the Rev booth, did a great demo with Sean Tubbs. Uh, and they've been uh, rolling out channels of uh, one of their amps, the generator, blank on the name of the amp, uh, forgive me, but they've been rolling out, they've been parsing out channels of this amp into pedals, so the, G, the, the G3, the G4. So the G2 is kind of their low to mid game um, pedal. And I mean, you know, Sean Tubbs doing the demo, he could make anything sound really, really good. But it was really great how, you know, you could almost crank the gain in this pedal as high as it goes. It's not quite high gain. It's more medium-ish gain. But how it cleans up so well was, like, was really, really impressive. Um, comes in at 229. Uh, has two different modes. It's a green pedal, but it has a blue mode and a red mode. So one's higher gain, one's lower gain. Uh, three bass, mid, treble, volume, gain. I mean, the controls that couldn't be any simpler. And we were messing around with going, sweeping the gain knob and going between all the different modes. And I mean, once you kind of tailor in the EQ to your guitar, you can take the gain and volume and just nearly anywhere it goes, it sounds really, really good. Sweet. So that was one of the one of the highlights for me for today was the Rev G2. Yes. I have one more. Do you have any more? I have one, I have one more. <laughs> Let me do. Okay, I'll do mine and then you just can fight over. <clears throat> so I'm really into baritone guitars. That's actually what I mostly play. And uh, Revolta has a new one. Mm. They didn't have any literature on it or a tag on it or anything. It's not coming out to the holidays, like right before the holidays. But. Um, it's 28-inch scale. It's got a chambered mahogany body, I believe, and a Powell Ferro fretboard. Had cool, like, uh, you know, mother of toilet seat inlays, and had a P90 in the neck position, and a humbucker in the bridge that you could split with one of the volumes. And there's another volume that you can pull up to put them out of phase. <clears throat> I think they said it's going for about 1,200 come holiday time. So. 
I was impressed with that. That's good, yeah. So they make some. I played. So I haven't played the baritone, but I played some of their other revolting guitars. And for the money, they're really good. Yeah. yeah well, the other thing that I really, uh, the other thing that I did that wasn't me <laughs> is I went over to Fishman, and uh, they've got this new thing called Triple Play Connect that I believe <clears throat> came out today, okay. and it's two hundred twenty-nine bucks. It's a uh, a pickup. Essentially, you know, what I. Essentially, their take on the old school hexaphonic pickup, mm -hmm. so you can assign different uh, sounds to each string. But it comes with an app for the iPad, mm -hmm. and it's super controllable. You can dial in different degrees. Uh, I was playing a combination of a string section with a Hammond B3 with a great rotary speaker on it on mm -hmm. the bottom. Are the sounds built in? Yes, it, or the uh, they're in the app. They're so you basically app. use okay. the pickup with the app. And we did an interface video on that today. Oh, you did. I, so you can like assign. It was awesome. Portions of the fretboard to trigger loops, yep. you know, like drums and guitar. And because this, so this is like the next iteration of their triple play. Yeah, and, yeah, and if you're actually it's tapping, it's not wireless. And if you're actually tapping or something, you could actually add in an extra. You can, you could actually literally have a hand on the iPad, the touch sensitive area of the iPad, and having your guitar. I mean, you play it sounds from both sides. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but I dug the thing. It was really fun. You know, I was uh, uh, trying to screw it up if I could too, uh, and uh, so I started uh, trying to you know draw out harmonics. And it worked on some strings and it didn't, but the ones where it failed on were really great. It was just sort where of like it failed, a, it sounded like yeah, it was really cool. In a good way. Yeah, I mean, it sounded like a violin string breaking. You know, when it would fail on some of the lower frets. Uh, and on the high frets, the harmonic was just beautiful. It was just glowing. That's you know? cool. It was really a cool thing. So it's like a orchestra in a box for 229 So you're going to get that, put it on a Kramer, and play blues. <laughs> 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 All right, you got one. I more, got one right? last one. So we went uh, to the Super Booth, did a video today with uh, our old buddy Dave Coltai, and he has a new. Uh, new amp out comes in a combo and a head. It's the Galaxy, and it's not a reissue of an old vintage style super or whatever. It's kind of a whole new thing. Two channel amp, uh, and the way he kind of described it is the the clean side is the cleanest cleans that Supra he's ever put in a super amp, and the dirty side is the dirtiest dirty. So he kind of just took the dynamic range of where his where the amps so far in the lines have existed and just kind of push them out to the sides, you know. <laughs> so basically the clean the clean side is 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 based on uh, that amp that they did with Keeley, like the pedal platform combo mm -hmm. they did. So it's kind of on that um, 6v6 uh, setup. Uh, it's $12.99 for the head, $14.99 for the combo. Um, and uh, and we we had that we, when we did the video we had the, the dirty channel cranked up uh, quite loud I, I thought for sure we'd be shut yeah, down. Uh, Brent Mason yeah, get our Paul, you not, he didn't get mad. He didn't get mad. He didn't get mad. <laughs> but as soon as he was he at was the he was at the booth. The way, right? No, he was next to us and the the four twelve. <clears throat> he was playing at a very respectable volume, playing his amazing Brent Mason things. And then our demo guy just wham, and and I had my back to I couldn't. Apologies, Brett, for. And, uh, audibly encroaching on your on your demo time, but yeah, he, he cranked it pretty good. I think everybody was was a was a good sport. I tried to we tried to keep it to uh, uh, as little time chunks at that volume as possible. But it, but I think in the video come across it. It's it's a real lots. If you like a lot of headroom, then this amp is for you, which sure. I'm a big fan of. Yeah, yeah, I like the new Ozark over there too. Uh, thinner neck, lace pickup. So oh, super good. Yeah, yeah. Bully talked about uh, the is name that the the new semi hollow like three thirty five yeah. style. No, it's sod. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. it's based on the old Ozarks, okay. which were yeah, classic oh, yeah, yeah. Guitar. With the weird, weird looking the, pickup. Yeah, and those have the thick chunky neck, you know. Yep. But now they've reconfigured that. They've got a new bridge, and they also one have one pickup, and it's the, the weird looking one, yeah. right? Cool. You got any more, or should we let these fine people go? I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, so there's one more day of NAM tomorrow, Saturday. Come back and check out day three, editor's picks. Uh, we want to thank Carter Vintage Guitars again for letting us come here and use their front room. Mm -hmm. There's amazing stuff. This is just one a tiny fraction of the store, so yeah. check out check out their stuff online. If you're in town ever, come visit and have a heyday. Yeah, yeah. As a Nashville resident, this is my happy place. <laughs> so I would tell my Lori, I'm going to, I tell my wife Lori, I'm going to my happy place. Yes. Nice. Ted's going to Carter's. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us uh, at the happy place, and we'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs> See you later.